as the second biggest economy in Africa and 31st in the world. Endowed with tremendous natural and human resources, it's a wonder Nigeria has not surpassed or even matched global expectations in terms of human development. Nigeria is often seen as one of the most undisciplined and most corrupt nations on earth. With such a bad reputation globally, it is disturbing Nigerians are not more concerned about their situation and the actions that need to be taken to move Nigeria forward. The World Bank estimates that over $400 billion of oil money has been stolen from Nigeria since independence in 1960. Nigeria has the highest rate of HIV AIDS in West Africa, with 3.4 million people currently living with HIV. Nigeria has one of the highest maternal mortality rates in the world. Nigeria accounts for 2% of the world's population, but has 10% of the global burden of maternal deaths. UNICEF reports that one woman dies during childbirth every 10 minutes, giving the total rate of 53,000 women a year. One million children die before the age of five years old every year. 112.5 million Nigerians live in poverty. Whilst every country has its problems, in Nigeria, the fuel or driving force behind most of ours is known as impunity. In simple language, impunity is nothing but a disregard of law and order in society an open and shameless display of lawlessness with the arrogance of not being challenged because there is no accountability. Impunity is traceable to the lack of confidence in the rule of law by the ruling class. It is when we brazenly uh, refuse to observe rules and procedures you know, established by us, whether in the constitution, whether in our places of work, or general civil rules. It's um, freedom from risk of punishment. It's um, accepting a person who's a wrongdoer from punishment, as well as um, the due discipline. It's a sort of deviant behavior that propels someone to escape from punishment. Social commentators observe that any attempt to develop a nation without first tackling impunity will only amount to window dressing and resolve nothing. Impunity is a cancer that has eaten deep into the psyche of Nigerians in all works of life. And the effect is visible in four critical sectors of the society. Impunity multiply itself like a virus and before you know it, it can destroy the society. So the effect of non-enforcement uh, of laws is that impunity becomes widespread. And I think Nigeria typifies that example. Impunity is something that is of great concern and is inimical to peaceful coexistence, uh, enforcement of law and order, and achievement of sound and very justice in our society. As can be seen, impunity occurs everywhere in our society and our inability to deal with it engenders a society of anything goes. When there is a widespread confidence in the justice system that laws are fair, that laws will be enforced, the temptation to take laws into their hands will diminish. But impunity is beyond just taking laws into your hands. The feeling that even if you are caught, nothing will be done, it also, also plays a part in it. Every day, we witness civil servants, managers of private establishments, and ordinary citizens charged with the responsibilities of managing the institutions, enriching themselves from the treasury of these organizations with impunity. When these officials are charged, we often see how the law courts and judges minimize such trials and interpret legal meanings and sentencing to a comedy of satire and outrage. The main motivation 
is actually the absence of law, the absence of enforcement, the absence of redress mechanism to ensure that when I do the wrong thing, there is a good chance, there is a very high chance that I will not get away with wrongdoing. So when people come to realize that the courts perform without fear or favor, they fall in line. But impunity grows, the culture of impunity grows when you know you can buy a judge, for instance. You know that I can settle the judge. Then you can't misbehave. Because at the end of the day, you will get a lawyer to go to court and the lawyer will buy justice. So one of the you know, important programs in curbing impunity is to have a strong, independent judiciary. What about the electoral process? the exercise where citizens get to cast their preferences for who they want to lead them. Where is the sanctity of the people's vote when politicians and political parties and party thugs circumvent the will of the people through ballot box stuffing, rigging and open intimidation? The word Godfatherism is usually a flashy word that is so put across. If you have a conscience for yourself, you should think and believe in what you think. You must rely on your conscience or whatever you think is right. But if you think you rely on perpetually on a godfather, it is that so-called person that is perpetually accepted in society, not for being good, but for being bad, but also being regarded as somebody who is untouchable. So if you want to rely on such a person, you don't have a conscience for yourself. Now, you can have that in the civil, in the, even in the civil society. You can have that in the, in the civil service, in the bureaucracy, you can have that anywhere. You see, the most important thing is that these things are wrong because it represents a fundamental distortion between effort and reward. Once the human being sees a distortion between effort and reward, where the system is not level and is not sure that what is the determinant of the outcome is the effort he makes in in the lawful endeavor, he becomes discouraged. In that sense, Godfatherism destroys ethics, destroys values, and destroys our morals, and I think that's why it's all a positive. Abuses committed by the security services are also common in the manner that these acts are carried out with impunity. They include extrajudicial killings, beatings, arbitrary detention, and the destruction of property, as well as societal violence along ethnic, regional, and religious lines. But how do we deal with these types of issues when they are committed by security services. The citizens of this country belong to either one religious body or the other. And so as they come to church, as they go to mosque, as they go to shrine, the religious leaders have the responsibility to be able to talk to them that it is important for us, if this country must be good for all of us, to do things in order to behave well. We believe using the Islamic perspective, the teachings of our religion, whether it is Christianity, and I believe such a thing can be found in the Bible. So we, we are now determined to enlighten our, our followers as to the, bring them to the true meaning of these holy books so that they can also carry it out in the society so that the society will be a self place. Impunity has kept our beloved nation from reaching her potentials. And as our infrastructure decays and values erode, the issue is no longer a matter of discussion, but one that requires immediate and urgent action. We all must act now. I think government has a responsibility to up its activities so that this, the level of impunity in the society will be reduced because the level of impunity as we have it today is not beneficial to citizens, it's not beneficial to the government, it's not beneficial to the country. And all hands must be on deck to ensure that impunity is reduced. The buck stops here. It stops with government. It stops with the press. It stops with the judiciary. Most of all, it stops with you. We all have responsibilities to maintain law and order. To respect others, we all must live by the rules which govern the country and not beyond or above it. We must protect those rights and act against those who may wish to violate those rights with impunity. It is the people of Nigeria who have a responsibility, who have a duty to address this culture of impunity. Because 
We have made this point again and again, and we cannot be tired of making it. Namely, that government is created by the people. The government did not create the people. So if the government is misbehaving, it is the people that can dissolve the government. The government can never dissolve the people. It's not going to happen. So we have a duty to continue to insist that the right things are done. And whenever people are in public offices and they are doing those wrong things that we don't like, those things that are against the laws that have been made or that we accept, we must challenge them, we must confront them, we must resist them by all means possible, by all means necessary. I'm a believer in the power of government to do things, but I think the strongest power in society is the power of the people. Um, actually, if you study social change and see how it has evolved, great ideas can come from the elites, but it often catches a catalytic force when the people below join it, then the government must respond to it. I'm a believer that we can keep on saying government should do this, government should do that, and those in government ought to take note. But I'm more interested in seeing how the people can organize themselves to mobilize, to enforce for their rights, and to demand that what is right is done at all times. There are many ways that governments and societies fight impunity. We must rehabilitate victims of the acts of impunity and restore their dignity. By including discussions on impunity in all platforms, okay, in all social platforms that the, the orientation agency has, even when we are inducting new officers into our services, we should introduce concept on what constitutes impunity. In all social spaces, we should introduce it. We have to take a stand at the level of the individual to say, well, I reject impunity and whatever it stands for. And when you take that stand, you now move ahead to operate in such a way in society that you do not get, you know, cowed. You make sure you obey the laws, do all the duties that is expected of you as a citizen, and then you stand on your rights and insist on your rights being protected. In that way, you send a strong message to the powers that be that you reject and you will not be cowed and that you will not in any way fall to anybody's uh, temptations to do the wrong things. The assertion of the rule of law and the building of a human rights culture that respects all persons, no matter who they are, must be enforced. Cases have to be brought to the court. And those who take cases to the court, I'm talking of the government in particular, governments that want to prosecute criminal cases will have to be committed to the eradication of criminality in the society, eradication of impunity in the society. When the government itself lavishly grants amnesty to all manners of criminal offenders, the government loses the moral integrity to bring those who commit lesser offenses to justice. What has made the impunity to become prevalence in our society is that many people are unaware of uh, the consequences of this impunity and uh, many people, when they are victims of impunity, they don't know where to, you know, to lay complaints. But with this uh, kind of uh, uh, movement we have now, or the trainings, we feel that we'll be able to sensitize the community as to their right towards the uh, people committing the impunity. And uh, we believe that with uh, widespread knowledge about the laws governing or punishable you know, by impunity, they will be able to you know, have a free and uh, safe society. There must be an authoritative record of the past that can prevent future manipulation and distortion of acts of impunity committed by people and authorities involved. It is the business of the press to remind people. For instance, several acts of impunity you know, could have happened in the past and you, know, you and I get on with our daily business and we forget about it. But the press, in reporting a fresh case of impunity, can, can tell us that this is the tenth time that such a thing is occurring. So they can help to put impunity cases in perspective. They can help society understand the magnitude of the problem, its prevalence, how widespread it is. The press should be on the side of truth and justice. When the press reports with impunity issues that they have no idea of at all, or they have not even taken steps to verify, they are also engaged, they are also guilty of the same 
uh, offense of impunity. So what we are saying is the press should, as a matter of urgency, okay, um, watch itself and respect the values of journalism of the profession by taking steps to confirm, to verify facts on individuals, on issues before they publish, and also by redefining their content to reflect the needs of society so that it is not a question of us versus them. We should begin to see a press that is sensationalizing positive stories as well. We must educate our people about deterrence of potential perpetrators and put them on standby to look out for those who will exploit their rights and treat them with impunity. I believe that we need to save the less political institutions, the law enforcement agencies. We need to, we need to gain autonomy, some level of autonomy back for them. We need to gain some level of professionalism for them so that people are able to say, you know what, I am a professional. So if educational is just begin to imbibe this culture, run a curriculum that will be able to teach people of the value. Moral rebirth, I think, is going to be a very great thing for us to move forward. Government must ensure that there is accountability of these security agencies so that citizens will have trust, not only in the security agency, but in government. Anywhere we have injustice is a problem. Injustice done anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. So if you don't kick against impunity on time, it's going to be so disastrous at the end of the day. As we wage this campaign against impunity, we hope that this video gives you a proper perspective on what impunity is, how it affects you, and what you need to do as a people to stamp out impunity in Nigeria. Act now. Stop impunity today. Don't just wish for it. Do the right thing. Work towards a greater Nigeria.